beta models. But I'm not here to talk just about ceramic. Um, you could probably put me in the space more in terms of like the region, society change people. And I think that there's actually a lot more I'd like to see blockchain do than just be like a bunch of crypto tokens. So we're going to talk about supply chain traceability and why that's important. Um, why does it matter? Uh, first of all, you know, there's a ton of greenwashing. You've got all this thing where it's like ESG, you know, climate this, climate that, and, you, and I think you probably have heard that the carbon credit markets tend to be totally fake. Anyone can just claim that they're doing anything. How do you prove it? So you need to have traceability. You need to have some way to combat that. Uh, human rights impacts are huge. Um, I'm actually uh, on the UN Committee for Cobalt Mining, and Cobalt Mining in the DRC in the Congo, you know, you have a lot of violence, you have a lot of people being abused, and, and being able to actually demonstrate that that is or is not happening, again, is very important for putting that back pressure. So how do you apply that pressure? Suppose we care about this, you can get regulatory pressure. The EU, the European Union, is putting in regulations about it, but how do you enforce them? Because usually what happens is, the mid is, the, is people just, they, they kind of say, oh yeah, I told my subcontractors don't do that, I'm sure they listened. And, and they really don't take that responsibility. So you get regulations, but they have to be enforceable. And then the European Union is putting in some actual traceability requirements, and that's actually also a business opportunity for Web3 developers, because those are gonna be implemented with cryptographic signing. So you have uh, kind of this whole very moving ecosystem that's not just uh, kind of the NFTs and the token economy, but we're actually using it to demonstrate things about the real world. So this is just talking about tackling greenwashing. This is a, a slide, and I'm borrowing slides from some people I collaborate with. Uh, but yeah, 42% of, of environmental claims were considered deceptive. You really have a huge, huge problem with, we've got these problems where people are just lying about it. Um, this is kind of a worse problem. Uh, actually, a couple people who work with me on a project live in Myanmar. They told me the military actually, actually, she just told me she's got to leave Myanmar uh, two days ago because they're conscripting every single young person, men and women. And uh, they're also kill a lot of people. So that's a problem, but how do we address it? It's, oh, it's over there. But, you know, Chevron does business with them. So how can we press Chevron to actually press for change or maybe disinvest so that they're not funding the junta in Myanmar. How can you actually demonstrate that? Again, you get a lot of lip service, not a lot of action. How could you demonstrate it? Um, so the European Commission uh, is coming up with something called the Digital Product Passport, uh, which means that they're going to actually have a traceability, like from mine to laptop. This laptop has a battery in it that has a lot of cobalt that was mined in the Congo. Now, right now, I have no idea whether it was mined by an artisanal miner who actually had rights or whether it was a slave laborer. I don't know, I'm just using the laptop. So the, tra the product passport goal is to have that capability. And right now they're doing stuff about recycling but they're trying to get the mine, and the, the pressure can come because if you want to sell that laptop in the European Union, you'll have to obey that standard and actually do that traceability. So that puts the back pressure all the way back to the mine if we can do it right. So uh, there's a committee, uh, and there's a recommendation at the UN, recommendation 49, for a transparency protocol. There's some smart folks working on it. It's not just blockchain but it, it will have to do with blockchain because blockchain is useful for having that distributed ledger. Um, all the data will not be on blockchain, and we'll get into that, but, but there will be some, some use for it. I'm gonna, this is a complicated diagram. We're going to look at it twice. Um, I'm just going to go over it briefly now, and it's going to pop up again. But the idea is that a person could look at the barcode and, and see some kind of product passport. It would have some kind of credentials attached and some kind of traceability events. It would not have every single event that happened in the chain, because there might be thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So it's not going to have them all sitting there for you to click on with your mobile phone. But the idea is that those are shown to, to someone, and the business then shows them to someone who's maybe an auditor, who maybe is an organization in this field, and that auditor looks at all the data and maybe makes a credential saying, yeah, I looked at it and it's good, and maybe here's a hash of that so you can't change the evidence later if someone else wants to look at it, and we'll get into that too. Um, and there might be some, some, some of the events might get anchored into the passport. So you're kind of going to get all that connected. Um, so anyway, it's an interoperability 
protocol, not platform. A lot of people have been saying protocols, not platforms recently. That's the whole motto of the blue sky. You know, that's kind of the motto of Web3. Um, and this is just another reminder that it's going to either be a race to the top or a race to the bottom. If we actually put credible pressure in place, then everyone's going to have to do better and better. And, but if greenwashing is really prevalent, you won't be able to make money without doing it. So it's really a decision we have to make to invest in that. Uh, so anyway, it's a W3C standard. Um, if you're familiar with that, you know, those are the standards that built the web. Um, and it, it's basically a vocabulary. Okay, but where does this all connect to the blockchain? So it's not just blockchain. Just because you put something on the chain doesn't mean it's true. I can write stuff to you know, Ethereum all day long that is just lies, and it still lies even though it's written there. You just know that I wrote it. I can't say I didn't write it. That's all you get. So that's helpful, but it's not enough. And also, there's a lot of data here, and we don't want it to be more expensive. So you don't want to like create, you know, if you are coming here hoping that there's going to be a supply chain chain and you can like speculate on it, no, that's not the way it is. But there's a standard that does want there to be some type of maybe anchoring to chain, cryptographic signing, maybe a hash to the evidence. And this standard is actually being developed right now. I mean, you can actually participate in the committee if you want to. Um, so he, now these are my thoughts. These are not shared by everybody in the space, but I want to share them because uh, this is kind of where I've come to in it. One of the very important things, if I claim that this laptop battery was not built using slave labor, I should make an address for that claim. Like uh, this uh, Mac, you know, Apple should have to say the, Mac, the Macs that were made in this batch on this model number were not made with slave labor and actually address have an address, because anything with a URI, I can talk about it, and I can talk about it permissionlessly. Now, the other thing is that if you actually anchor them at a time and a geolocation, say, maybe there's an evidence in the mind that this was actually, this cobalt was mined at this location on this date, aha, now somebody who was at that location at that date can say, oh, wait, I was there. No, that sucked. They killed like three people that day. You know, it, it's like you can actually make adversarial attestations if you anchor to the real world. Um, and I'm going to try to make sure we have time for, for questions. So there's a lot going on here. Um, you're going to have to have some zero knowledge proof. Um, you should be able to make permissionless chain claims. You do not want high volume data on chain, but you might have a, a big blob of high volume data and you take the hash of it and you could put the hash on chain because that way somebody later who's looking at it, they can't change it before they show it to them. So, so there's a number of things that are useful. And now we're getting back to this again. I just wanted to walk through that again. So maybe these are being written somewhere. And now I work at Ceramic. I'm, I'm not doing this talk to push Ceramic, but I actually think it might be a good place to put it because it's a lightweight way to have signed things that can be anchored in time, that can, that can change the little Merkle tree. Um, and then they get anchored to the chain. So it might be on Ceramic. It might be on some other uh, equivalent thing. Um, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of competing things, so I won't list them all, um, where you could, you could write cryptographic blobs cheaply and anchor just the hash. So that might be a way that this happens. Um, and then the credentials will actually be verifiable credentials. Now, that's a separate world from blockchain, but actually any blob of signed data, if we just get techie for a second, if you have a blob of signed data, you can basically make it be a verifiable credential if you just have a signature over the right organization of the data. Like if you put it in the format of the verifiable credential and sign it, you can store an extra signature. So anyway, stuff on chain can be compatible with verifiable credentials. That's, that's the point. Um, so this is an example of the battery passport. You can see there's all these steps from the mine to the refiner to the factories, and then you get to the end users. And then they also care about, did that actually get recycled, that same battery? And right now, they are tracking whether it got recycled. So they're actually tracking this part, but they're not successfully tracking this part yet. But we're going to do some pilot projects to demonstrate that it's possible. So this is now the argument for ceramic. Uh, you know, I actually think it's a good idea. I do work there, but I tend to be critical of my own stuff. But I actually think it's a good idea. Uh, it's, it's lower cost than an L2 uh, because it doesn't put everything on chain. Um, and it's, we have this whole composable thing that's sort of like MongoDB. So you have shared models, and two people could publish, and they could both consume the data that's published. We have data pools. So there's a number of, of things in ceramic that may give you some convenient tooling for this possible thing of shared data. And there's other things you could use, too. You know, some people might want to use the graph, which is on Ethereum, but it's a little bit heavier weight. It's not the only thing, but it's a thing you could use. And you should look for something that's lightweight. 
Um, so again, about the ceramic, what is ceramic? Since I'm here, they paid me to come here, I probably should talk about them. Um, it, it, it has a property graph. You can do GraphQL queries against it. Um, it's pretty scalable. Um, also, we anchor for you, so it's free to use right now. Um, and then this is actually a group that I advise that builds on top of ceramic, but this is bringing up another point that I think is important, which is the social graph. Because this auditor dude, if we go back to that thing, if we go back to this thing where this competent authority, this auditor looked at all the data and said, yep, that's right, but how do we know he wasn't paid off? So he needs to have a reputation. And I used to actually work risk at Postmates and fight credit card fraudsters. And one thing I learned is that if you have cross-domain data and a lot of rich data about people and their relationships, it's easier to catch the fraudsters. So if we can put in a graph those auditors, and we know other things they do, we know stuff about them and stuff how they behaved in the past, and we kind of have this metadata about them, I think that is really where it's gonna go. But first we have to do the main part. So what's the world like right now? It's, it's very um, nascent. Um, in cows, you can do it. Like the cows in Australia, if you buy beef in Australia, you know which cow it was and what the cow was doing and how much methane it breathed. But you don't know that for cobalt, and we're trying to get there. Um, right now, there is this thing called data stake where people can make incidents at mines and they make a reporting, and then the people who control that data actually can monetize that data by selling it to someone who needs to demonstrate it. But it's not unchained, it's still a centralized platform. And yeah, just remember there are real people, and a lot of that cobalt that's in those batteries is being gathered by hand by people who are actually subject to violence because they don't have the right to gather it, but they're doing it anyway, and then they get all kinds of different, you know, people start to try to hit them up for money, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So it needs to be regularized and monitored. Um, and then, how do you make the change really happen? Actually, I know we're covering a lot of stuff here, I'm kind of running through it fast, um, can be through conversations. And this is actually a different platform, but they also may want to decentralize and use cryptographic signing to measure their impact. This is a Verity platform that um, they make engagement. So if a corporation's doing something, they actually have somebody meet. Like maybe we could actually get somebody who's in DRC, who I know, who knows somebody out of mind, to talk to the laptop manufacturers. That might make this more powerful. We can talk to a woman who speaks Swahili, who can get a translator, who actually is at the mine site and have her talking to the CEOs of the laptop companies. That can be very powerful because they see it differently when they see a human being. So this, so, uh, this is kind of a, a mixed message here because this slide is about the macro level. Right now, everybody just estimates the macro level. They're like, well, they made a commitment and they wrote it on a piece of paper, they're probably good. Or, well, in this industry, usually on the average, it's this. Um, but what you really want is actual meetings that happened at a date and a time that occurred and the person who was at the meeting can attest to it and then say there was or was not follow-up. And then you can gather that into a data stream and that can actually be part of the data stream, which is yes, they actually had an engagement. Yes, they actually met. Yes, the person who came from this stakeholder said there was a follow-up. And once you get very granular, you can actually make little changes, which is how we get big changes sometimes. Or sometimes you just make a big, you know, there's other ways to make big changes, but sometimes you can make them bottom up. Um, so the standards are just emerging right now. Uh, this is actually an opportunity to help define them. Um, there's going to be a feedback process that happens over the next couple months, um, and I'm hoping that it's a very open standard. Um, I know the people working on it, they're good people, um, and we want it to be scalable, transparent, and also privacy preserving. Uh, so this is the uh, UN committee that's working on it. As you can see, they just kind of got the drafts done, and they're now trying to do the pilot and actually see if this will work. Um, and you know, you guys may not be in mining, but you know, people are welcome to come as stakeholders or observers or you know, kibitzers and say what you think. Um, and there's, you know, there's going to be business in this. There's, there's going to be maybe a jobs for trust architects. There's going to be people who have to implement this. There's going to have to be people who have to make the bridges between the current supply chain centralized stuff and and the traceability standards. So there's going to be work for people. It might be worth learning about. Um, and that is it uh, for the presentation. I wanted to have five minutes for questions. Does anybody have questions? Yes. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I think stuff that affects people is important. And, 
you know, in today's world, if you're not friends with people who might be in danger of getting killed, you need to make more friends. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I will release you all five minutes early. You can go play on the playground. But if there's any questions, feel free to come ask me. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. <laughs>